Hello everybody, welcome back to the 51 Yarns Spin Along. This is week 23, which is the Fractal Week. My name is Bex from the Tiny Fibre Studio podcast and if you are new, then welcome. This is a series of videos that I'm doing each week to correspond with Ply Magazine's 51 Yarns Spin Along Challenge. If you are a returning viewer, then welcome back. I hope your spinning is going well for you this week. So for this week's Spin Along, I already have the fibre and you've kind of already seen it because it's this which is by Hilltop Cloud and it is 70% Super Wash Chariot, 15% uh, Tussle Silk and 15% Nylon. It's 120 grams which I've said before I really appreciate about Hilltop Cloud's um, fibre quantities that she does. She, she does tend to do uh, larger amounts particularly if it's a base that is clearly designed to be a sock yarn, which I would say um, superwash, silk and nylon, it's pretty much destined to be a sock yarn. So that is what I'm going to be using. The reason that you've already seen it is because back in the early days, back in the self-striping week, there was this yarn that I did. So this was my self-striping. And I bought that fibre at Wonderwool specifically so that I could do um, one braid of it for the self-striping week and one braid of it for the fractal week. So the self-striping looked like this. So you can see there are quite a lot of different colours <laughs> and um, I have to be really careful when it comes to spinning this as a fractal to make sure that it doesn't just end up being really muddy. And that's probably my biggest concern with this is that I don't just want a massive hodgepodge of colors going on. Um, but it's a really nice, very durable feeling yarn. And I don't mean that in a derogatory <laughs> sense. Um, it just feels like it would, you know, stand up to some, some wear and tear. For the self-striping week, I spun it as a chain ply in order to make it really easy for me to get the stripes, which worked out very, very well. I'm very pleased with my, my self-striping. However, when it comes to fractal, the easiest way to do fractal is to do a two ply. But I have decided that because the self-striping is technically kind of a three ply weight, and I might possibly want to use the self-striping and the fractal in the same project. I want to try as much as I can to match the two yarns, which means that I'm going to need to do the fractal as a three ply. That's not a problem. You can do fractal as a three ply, but I just want to be really careful about how I do that because there are a lot of different colors. And if I'm not really, really, really careful, I'm going to end up with quite muddy stuff happening <laughs> um, because there are lots of different colours. Uh, it goes from turquoise to brown to pink to there's a teeny bit of the turquoise back in there to green to brown to purple to orange. I guess the easiest way to explain fractal in spinning terms is to think about a two ply yarn and then I'll explain how I'm going to do it for the three ply. So with a two ply yarn, you would split your fibre in half, set one half aside because that will just be spun from end to end as it is. And then with the other half of the fibre, you then split that and split it again. Um, and you can split it as many times as you think you want to in order to get shorter colour repeats. So what you're going to end up with is one single that is very long repeats and one single that's short repeats. And then you would ply those together. And what you tend to end up with is still cut. You still kind of get the colour graduation, but it just happens in a more subtle way because of the way that the colours overlap differently. When I'm doing this for three ply, this is going to be really interesting because first of all, it's going to be kind of tricky to be able to split this equally into three sections. Could be a little bit difficult. Secondly, I then have to decide how much I want to split the other sections of the fractal. So at the moment, my plan is to obviously split one third off and just spin that third 
um, end to end. That should be relatively straightforward. The second one, I need to decide how many times I want to split it. And I think I can only really decide that once I actually start splitting the yarn and see what it physically looks like in front of me. I may just split that section in half. And then the third one I might split in half twice. So in other words, four strands. We will see. Incidentally, a couple of um, colour based references for you for this week. Um, the first of them, of course, is the colour issue of Ply Magazine. This was, I think, issue two. Yeah, issue two um, from autumn 2013. It is, as far as I know, the physical issue is out of print, but you can get the digital issue. So that's a cool option. Um, there is an article in here that deals specifically with Fractal. But there's also a whole load of other information here about things like spinning from bats and how to get different colour effects with those. So that is, as always, a good resource. There's also a Craftsy class, which is very good. It's by Felicia Lowe called Spinning with Dyed Fibres. Felicia Lowe is the founder of Sweet Georgie Yarns. And I haven't watched that one for a while, but again, it's full of tips on how to deal with and manage colour so that you get what you want from dyed fibres. I think it's sometimes something where people are a little bit concerned about the idea of ruining um, a dyed fibre by spinning it wrong. Um, first of all, there's no wrong way to spin a fibre. You spin it however you like, but there are certainly considerations about how you want the finished effect to be. And it's useful to know how to sort of take those things into consideration before you start so that you end up using that yarn as you want to be able to use it. Okay, so it is time to get splitting this fibre. So I mentioned it's 120 grams. So I'm going to want to end up hopefully with about 40 grams of each section. So I'm going to split it into three first and then I'll split those three sections further down. One thing that is really, really, really important is to keep track of which end you need to start spinning from. Um, even if you have a fibre that seems to be dyed as like a mirror image of itself, so once you've undone it, you might sometimes find that if you kind of looped the two ends together, that it kind of looks like it was um, dyed in a big loop. Even if that's the case, keep track of which end is which. Otherwise, you might just find that the sequencing of colours just isn't quite what you expected. Okay, so I'm going to start from this end and I am just going to pull this out, just unravel the whole thing so you get to see all of the colours. This is so much fun. I really, really enjoyed spinning this the first time around because it was just like, oh, which colour is going to come next and how much of that colour is there and all that kind of stuff. It was just lots of fun to spin. There we go. So that is my fibre. When I was talking about fibres being dyed almost like they're a mirror image, um, I've just kind of bundled this up so that you can see how it was originally laid out when it was dyed because you can see the uh, the turquoise sections at the end here were slightly thicker. You've got the thin turquoise section in here. You've got this big pink section. So I can see the way that that was originally organized when it was dyed, but it's not going to be exact. So that's why I need to make sure that I mark whichever end of this I'm going to start spinning from on each of the fibres so that I know which end it should start from and therefore I get the colours lining up in the right way. Okay, so then we have to try and figure out um, what one third of this is going to look like. So I'm just going to try and kind of wrap my head around this a little bit and try and figure out how much fibre I need to strip off each side. I will just say that Fractal is um, one of the yarns that's a little bit more wasteful in the sense that unless you are really, really good at both splitting fibre and spinning fibre, 
it is highly likely that you're going to end up with some leftovers on one or more bobbins by the end of it. So I'm just really roughly trying to figure out kind of what a third feels like in my hands. I feel like this one's probably got more at the moment than it should have. All you can really do is to just kind of feel, you know, how thick does that section feel compared to that section, compared to that section. I feel like I've got it about right as it is there. So three sections. What I'm going to do first of all is to just put a little slip knot in the top of each of these strands. And this is so that I know which end I'm starting from each time. And each other time that I split this fibre, I'll be doing the same. So I make sure that I've always got that slip knot at the top of each section. Okay, so slip knots on the end of each section. And then I'm just going to start trying to split this fibre out. I feel like this section here is going to come away fairly neatly from the others because of the way that I chose to split it. So I'm just going to go down and just pull this section apart from the rest. And I find it easiest to just do a little section at a time, kind of pulling it straight apart. because you also don't want to kind of mess the fibres up too much. You don't want them all, um, you know, getting muddled up. You don't want individual fibres kind of floating around where they shouldn't be. You want them to kind of keep their alignment as much as possible. Keep an eye on how thick or thin you think that section is. If you feel like it's starting to get thinner or thicker than it should be, then just take a second to stop and reevaluate it and if necessary make adjustments. Okay, so that is my first strip done. And because this is going to be the one where I literally just spin it straight from start to finish, I'm just going to braid it starting from the opposite end from where I'll start spinning and I'll create a braid out of it just in case you've never actually done a braiding of fibre before. Safi, can you not taste test it, darling? Thank you. Good girl. Um, it's basically like a crochet chain. So you just make a slip knot to start with. Safi, stop eating it. And then just keep making little loops that you bring the fibre through. I like to store most of my spinning fibres in braids because I just find that it's um, easier to kind of keep them under control. I know some people don't like them, they feel like it compresses the fibre too much. Personally, I've never really come across that that much, but you can always kind of fluff the fibre out sideways if you do find that it's a little bit compressed after storage. Also with fractal spinning, I would definitely recommend somehow labeling each of the fibers so that you know whether it belongs to your first single, your second single, your third single and so on. Okay, there we go. So I have a little mini braid now with a slip knot in the end so I know which end to start from. And I, it would also be very, very difficult for me to start from this end because it's not the natural end that the braid is going to unravel from. So that should force me to start from this end. All right, moment of truth. Um, I'm going to weigh this and see. So th this is the section that I'm going to be um, spinning just end to end. I'm going to weigh this and see how close I am. So it's 120 grams in total. So I should have about 40 grams. Let's see how we did, see how equally it splits. Moment of truth. Ooh, 43, that's not bad. That is not bad at all. It's always a little bit of an inexact science because um, you're dealing with fiber and it's not precise. It's not like, I don't know, 
cutting a cake <laughs> where you could conceivably manage to get exactly equal portions. It's just not quite the same. So that's all good. So as I was splitting that, it kind of naturally wanted to go into uh, three sections. So I have split it as three sections. Um, I'm now debating what I want to do with my final piece. Um, basically, whether I want to try to split it into six. I don't know. As I mentioned before, I'm a little bit concerned that because there are so many colours and because the colour repeats are relatively short, what I don't want them to do is to repeat too quickly and just get kind of muddy. Let's see, let's have a look at this fibre. Let me see what it's trying to tell me to do. Yeah, again, I kind of feel like it wants to be split at this stage into three. I think I could get away with splitting that into six. We're going to try it. We're going to try it and we're going to see what happens. So there was a point somewhere down here where it started naturally splitting into kind of one smaller section and then another section that was about twice the size. So I'm going to start splitting actually from part way down the fibre, which is not normally what I'd recommend, but I'm going to go with that. And again, as soon as I get to the end that I'm going to start spinning from, I need to make sure that I put my slip knot in there so that I know that that is the end that I'm going to be starting from. And this is where it does get kind of important to just do those little bits at a time, like I mentioned before, because if you start kind of splitting big sections off this, you'll probably notice that individual little wisps of fibre will tend to try and stick to the larger section. So you just want to try and do it fairly gradually, a little piece at a time. And again, just correct any uh, differences in thickness as you go down. This is the one that's a little bit more tricky because it didn't naturally want, want to split into two equal sections. There we go. I think I've got it a bit more equal now. Usually you'll find that if it is combed top, then it will naturally split just because of the way that the, um, the machinery works you'll normally end up with a little distinct split that does make it fairly easy to strip it down into smaller sections. I can feel this section getting a little bit thinner. So I'm just going to pull this straight down the side and just grab some extra little bits of fibre as I go until it kind of evens back out again. So I'll just recap on where I am at the moment. So I've got my first single, which is just going to be spun um, end to end, just the whole thing. So there's 43 grams of that one we established. I've got this little pile of snakes here, which is the second single. And that's where I've taken essentially that and split it into three and I haven't weighed this one yet. Let's see what that one is. Uh, so that one is 40. So that was actually bang on a third. Um, and now I've just split the third section into three, but 
I now need to strip these down once more so that they are half the width that they are at the moment and therefore different from this lot. <laughs> Following me? This is the bit where it does get quite tricky really to um, try to make sure that you're getting roughly even amounts on each side especially if the fibre naturally wants to split at the wrong point. <laughs> okay, so I'm doing a little section and then I'm coming back and doing a little bit of the chain. I tend to find that by the time I get down to little sections of fibre like this, using my hands just tends to kind of mess them up more. So I just use a large crochet hook at this point find that a lot easier than trying to use my fingers. Just make the chain fairly loose. Um, you don't need it to be really, really tight. You're just trying to organize the fibers and not have them getting too tangled up. And don't worry about being really precise with this. Nobody is ever gonna look at your fractal spun yarn and go, oh my goodness, you let that braid be half a millimetre thicker than the other braid. <laughs> um, that's never ever going to happen. But it's just, you know, for your own satisfaction, I guess. You just want to keep it as close to an even split as you can. Don't forget, any time that you get anywhere near the end that you're going to be working with, Put a slip knot in it so that you remember which end you're going to start from. So all of the splitting is now done and I just want to clarify the structure of this. So I've got um, three different sections here. So I split this one off. This was my first third of the original braid. Then the second third I split into three. So this is one of the thirds of that third. And then this is uh, from the final third of the original braid, which I split into a total of six pieces. Incidentally, I just tried this and I was like, how amazing would these look as dreads? I would, I would totally wear these as dreads. They're all marked with the slip knot at the end. What I am going to do to just make sure that these all stay together is I'm going to just put them in some um, Ziploc bags just to make sure that each of the different sections stays together and I get, don't get them mixed up. However, you should be able to see that they are very, very different sizes. It would be really hard to get these confused because I have three very, very different widths of fibre there. So you can see that it would be kind of difficult to get those mixed up. So the next stage of the process is going to be to actually spin this lot. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, this will be done as three singles. So the first thing will be to spin the thickest section, just literally end to end. And then the second section, which is the, the kind of medium section, the one that I split into three, that I will spin end to end and then the next piece of it end to end and so on until I've completed that one and then I'll go on to the thinner ones. There's no particular order, the order doesn't matter. At the end of the day they're all going to get plied together so choose whatever you want. I feel like the thinner braids will probably feel like they go quicker because you will be changing braids more frequently. So if you want some uh, instant achievement, then that's probably the way around to do it. I'm gonna be referring back to the notes that I made when I did the uh, self-striping yarn so that I get roughly the same um, final yarn out of it. I, of course, have my little sample book that I've got some samples of the original singles and the original plyback tests and all that stuff from the self-striping yarn. So fingers crossed, I should be able to get a yarn that is pretty similar, at least similar enough to be used in the same project.
Okay, so the fractal spin is done. Um, I spun each of those three different sections and I've now finished plying them. The yarn has been finished and I've knitted a swatch. So we're all good, we're all done. I've got some examples to show you. I was very happy that my worst fear did not happen. My worst fear being that if I split it too thin, that I would end up with just one big blob of brown from all the colours mixing together. The reason that I had that concern was because if you look at the self-striping yarn, you can see that there are a whole ton of different colours in there. Have you dropped it? Yeah, have you dropped your mousey? That's no good, is it? What am I supposed to do with that? Good boy. Hmm? What am I supposed to do with that? Can you bring it up here, please, when you drop it? Um, there are lots and lots and lots of different colours. You can see here there are oranges and pinks and purples and browns and greens and turquoises and yeah, basically all of the colours. Um, you can also see from the self-striping sample, which I think is about 30 stitches wide, um, you can see that they are fairly short colour repeats as well. Um, so my concern was that if I split the sections for the fractal too thin, that they would just end up all kind of blending together because um, the, all of the colours would just kind of merge and there wouldn't be enough distinction between them. I'm very pleased to say that that did not happen. So this is the fractal spun yarn. I would say apart from possibly one section where the turquoise stands out as being a single ply, then I'm actually really happy with it. So this is the finished swatch. And I basically did exactly the same as I did for the self-striping. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. There is one bit here where it's kind of just, you can see that it's just one strand of the turquoise and it looks a little bit thin. I don't know why I don't mind that so much in the pink section. There is a pink section further up where that happens as well, but I guess it's just the amount of contrast between the two colors that kind of makes it stand out a little bit. But in general, I'm really happy with that. I don't think that they all merge in the wrong places. I don't think that it comes off as just being one color. So success, yay. <laughs> as far as the spinning is concerned, I did the spinning on the mini spinner and used exactly the same settings as I did for the self striping, at least to whatever degree I can adjust that at the moment. My mini spinner is the version two, so it has the V2 motor, but it doesn't have the tachometer. So I can't at the moment, <laughs> I can't use the LCD that tells you um, how many RPM you're using and, and what the torque level is. So I am looking at getting that retrofitted. It's either that or buy a Mini Spinner Pro, which is kind of expensive, like over two grand at the moment. So yeah, that's quite a lot. Um, so what I do for the moment is I just keep a little record uh, in my photos of what settings I'm using on the dial for each one. And then I just kind of have to hope that I can match the brake band tension to the amount of twists that are going in, which I don't know, usually I can. I'm normally fairly good at that. The two swatches were both knit on three millimeter. Yeah, three millimeter needles. The way I can tell is I do the is all the um, Little Red in the City trick of doing yarn overs for each full millimetre and then a purl stitch for each quarter millimetre. So I can just look at the corner of my sample 
and I can see that there are three yarn overs there, but no purl stitches, so I know it's on three mil needles. Realistically, I would not use three mil needles necessarily to actually knit something with these because this is a very hard wearing fabric, unless that's what I want, then I will probably not be using three mil needles for it because it is uh, sturdy, let's say. <laughs> but this is designed to be a sock blend, it's Cheviot silk and nylon, so definitely intended to be socks. But yeah, if I was looking for something to be um, fairly soft, three mil needles is probably not going to cut it. If I want it to be really hard wearing, which if I actually make socks out of it, I probably would do, then I might knit it on three or even less actually. This is probably where I should confess that I'm generally not a huge fan of barber polling in yarns. Barber polling, if you're not familiar with the term, is if you imagine one of those red and white barber pole signs, it, it's basically yarns that look like that, where there's a big distinction of colour between two or more plies. Um, however, <laughs> the advantage of that when it comes to a fractal spin is a with a fractal yarn you're going to get that you're just going to have to accept that you're going to get that and secondly that when you're both spinning and knitting it you get to these points where you go oh that's a really nice color combination that i possibly wouldn't have ever thought of doing um there are several color combinations in this one that I would never particularly have chosen to put together, but they're really good. They look really, really nice. Um, as far as what I'm gonna do with these, I'm considering making a pair of socks, one self-striping, one fractal. Everybody needs odd socks, right? They will be fairly hard wearing. You know, they're not gonna be soft, snuggly socks. They will be pretty hard wearing. Um, but I think that would be kind of fun to just have one sock self-striping and one fractal. Just in case you think that I spend my life throwing a mouse for my cat, I kind of do. <laughs> anyway, that was the end of the fractal week. I'm really happy with how these two samples came out of the same batch of fiber. So I hope that it was useful to see the same fiber spun up in two different ways. Um, of course, how you choose to spin your fiber is entirely up to you and your taste, but you do have control over it. Um, you don't have to spin it exactly as it comes. So you can try different stuff out and see what happens. As a little bit of an update for anybody who is posting their results of the spin along on Facebook, Ravelry or Instagram, um, just as a little note, I did see a message from somebody who's close to JC on Instagram. I want to say it was Gillian Marino, but I could be wrong. Um, just saying that JC has told her that she wants to be the one to choose the winners for each week but obviously JC's just had an absolutely horrendous um, family tragedy and there are far more important things going on in her life right now. So just be patient, it will happen, but obviously she's in a really, really difficult place at the moment. So once again, I hope that this has been a useful episode for you. Um, please let me know in the comments if you have ever tried Fractal, what you thought of it. Um, I have to say I was kind of pleasantly surprised by the results because Fractal is not a method that I would generally choose to manage colour with, but I would consider doing it again. Next week's spin along is spinning in the grease, which will be interesting. Um, normally my fleece is washed, so it will be interesting to see what happens when it's not. In between now and the next episode, you can find me on Instagram as Tiny Fibre Studio and on Ravelry, I'm Ibex. Hope this episode was useful and I will see you again next week.